It's Tom Hammond. Like, you look at the game now, it's on one light. And I'm barely even up on, I have to go all the way down on my. That's how far down I gotta go. Compared to. That's where the signal gotta go all the way down to. But see, the tone X is a normal pedal. It responds like an amp. So I just, yeah. Just a little quick. That is something that, if you have an active bass, the tone, uh, the, the pot express is going to annoy you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Because of your high output on your bass, it's going to annoy you. Um, trying to get everything clean for your presets. But here we go. Here's the tone X. And you know something that that gets taught that doesn't get talked about as much either is when you do go into the um well for one what well, let's start here the the pod express um it does i do the one of the things I do actually like about it is the amp models I say that every time I talk about it because I gotta I feel the need to because I, I say I don't like it so much. 
I've been trying to stop, but every time I'm using it, and, and I've run into portions where I got to do these finger gymnastics to edit and, you know, adjust different things, and it's just like, oh, my goodness, this is, that's too much. But because even on the Tonex is, is, is simpler. The Tonex is even simpler to operate, and it has way more features. And then you run it in a computer and do all your fancy stuff. But the EQ section on the Tone X1, you can actually go in when you do your... So after you do your captures or whatever it is you do, um, you want... Say you did an amp or something, you can go in and you can save the compressor settings, you can save the noise gauge settings, and the reverb, and um, the EQ settings with um, mix, and you got a, a dry and a wet knob. You know, on that, so you can have your dry bass come through along with the um, cabinet and all the other stuff, all the effects. Basically, you can have a, a, an effects signal chain and then some of your dry signal still coming through. And, you know, what that does sometimes, depending on what type of amp you're using, it allows you to retain your clarity and your the highs, um, a lot of the trouble, you know. So... That's something that, that if you didn't know, definitely check that out, um, you know, because you can set the frequency of each of these um, EQ knobs, which is amazing. And you can change the reverb type. So you got different types of reverb. You got five different types of reverb. You got, um, I believe it's three spring, one plate, and one room reverbs. I just keep mine on room because when I'm using IRs, I like to do just a little bit of reverb, just a little bit of reverb because it makes it sound like the amp is in the room. Like it helps it feel sound like it, like in your in your in ear. So it's not so the right here, like right up on it, it makes it sound like like it's in the room, but it's around you. So um, I turn my noise gate off because. I like to do my muting myself, and I don't like, you know, unless I'm using, like, some really high um, high gain amp model or something like that, or, like, I was thinking about um, that TC Electronic BH500, that tube drive. Um, I only did two captures with the with the um, tube drive on, and that was with it on, like, four and then six, and then I'm probably going, I'm going to do one with it, like, on eight and ten all the way up. Um, but... Yeah, you know, this, the captures are really, really, really amazing. Um, but you can set those EQs to whatever you want them to be. And the noise gate, um, when you use the noise gate, it'll ha make it like a gated overdrive type thing and just help when you're not playing it to be clean in between note, um, actual notes. So, you know, all those parameters you can save. And then but you got to – the mistake I was making – um, and I think a lot of people are making when they're doing it is they're not. Um, I was originally doing my captures and then I would name my captures and then I would just put the capture directly onto the pedal. I still do that now, like because I'm used to it. And it's just the I do my captures the the way I they come out the way I want them to <laughs> just put it like that. Like they they sound the way I want them to. So I don't need to edit them. But if I did. I also have begun as I'm making presets, I'm going to make presets for all of those and set the EQ knobs to where I want them. Like, I don't, um, default for the bass knob is like a shelf EQ of like 300 and below, but I would prefer that to be like 100 and below or maybe 90, 75 and below, something like that, you know. And on the highs, the trouble, I prefer that to be the, the default is like around 2,000 and it's a shelf on the highs. And it's like, I, I prefer that to be around 4,000. I wish they'd let it go up a little bit more. Five, 6,000 would be great. You know what I'm saying? Um, just to really give me some flexibility there. Because it, it'll go down below those too. So it's like a sweet, every, every, EQ knob is sweepable with the frequencies, which is um, great. And you can adjust the Q. Um, sorry, there. You can adjust the Q on the 